So the trailer is out now for Phantom Liberty, and along with this, CD Projekt has changed the system requirements for the game, and in a massive, massive way. I, I It's honestly completely shocking. Now they have um, some statements explaining this, and we will definitely di dive into it, but first, uh, let me just <laughs> show you. Okay, so we have one of these nice charts that they do these days. Um, where you actually get the uh, the graphic settings along with the frame rate target and the resolution along with all of the, the parts. So it's nice that they're doing this. Um, but this is a massive change from the one that originally came out when the game launched. Uh, this is the one that came out when the game launched. Sorry if I just blinded you. Um, now this one did not give frame rate targets. Uh, Although it turned out that most of these seem to be kind of getting you about, you know, better than 30 frames per second, but not 60 frames per second in mo most of these situations. Uh, now, granted, new graphics cards have come out since then, new CPUs have come out since then, but notice that, like, they're asking for CPUs along the lines of an i7-4790. That's, that's really old. <laughs> very, very old at this point. Uh, and getting up to maybe an i7-6700. Honestly, kind of ancient parts. Uh, now, in the new one, they're asking for things like, well, you want to play at 1080p 60 frames per second? I guess you need an Intel 12700 or a Ryzen 7 7800X, which is, uh, needless to say, a massive uh, step up. Oh, and you want to play at 4K resolution at ultra settings at 60 frames per second? I guess you need a 12900 or a 7900X. Now, the first thing I have to say about those CPU requirements is that it just sounds like absolute nonsense. So it's nice that they're updating this, but I, I mean, in le <laughs> I don't know what they could be doing. Maybe there is gonna be some massive rework to these uh, settings in the game, but at least how the game performs right now, this is utter nonsense. You do not need a 12900K to run this game at 60 frames per second at ultra settings. Although, again, this is coming with the Cyberpunk, uh, sorry, the uh, Phantom Liberty update, so maybe there is going to be just much more demanding stuff for this update. Now, they do explain some of this, and it does say that these changes will take effect following the next update to the base game no earlier than 90 days, and also apply to Phantom Liberty. So again, following the next update to the base game. So is it possible that there's gonna be some kind of massive graphics overhaul to the game that comes with Phantom Liberty that then does justify or at least explain uh, these differences I guess that uh, could be the case based on how they're phrasing that. Um, they're also saying that these requirements are designed to be more up to date, um, adding support for new GPUs um, that weren't available at launch, all of that. Um, you know, okay, fine. Uh, it also says that they're going to, one of, one of the changes, they're gonna stop supporting hard disk drives. And I think that this is, this is a good choice, honestly. And it doesn't mean that, and they're saying that it won't just suddenly not uh, not work on the previous minimum requirements like a hard drive. They're just going to stop testing on that. Now, if you guys want to complain about the hard drive thing, let me go over to PC Part Picker right now and show you that you could buy a 500 gigabyte, uh, uh, you know, SATA SSD. So you don't even need to have an M.2 slot in your motherboard available. Um, you can buy yourself a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD for $20, brand new. And you could get a lot more storage than that if you, if, you know, for not that much more money. So I will say that I do actually think it's reasonable to expect expect people to install games on SSDs right now. You can get a one terabyte SSD for thirty three dollars. Um, you can get, and again, I'm not saying that these are the fastest or the best, but if you're moving from a hard disk drive to an SSD, uh, you can get a two terabyte SSD for um, you know, a uh, hundred bucks. Actually, I think I set that a little bit too high right here. Let's let's bring that down slightly. Yeah, you can get a two terabyte SSD for 60 bucks, I was gonna say, <laughs> hundred seemed a little bit too much. Um, so my point here is that you can get a lot of solid state storage for not much money. So I don't mind them choosing to not try to continue to support hard drives. 
And honestly, guys, if you have a gaming PC and you don't have a solid state drive at this point, the, the prices, maybe they were too expensive when you first built your PC. The prices on solid state drives have come down so far that it just honestly does not make sense. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense to have a hard disk drive in your computer, but to play any kind of modern game um, off of a hard drive, I think is a mistake. If you store uh, you know, large video files or you store older games that were designed for hard drives, great, fine but you really should get a solid state drive for any kind of modern game that you're running. And especially at least as a, as a boot drive and install Hero OS on it and main programs that you use. Anyway, so I don't, I don't mind that. Um, but guys, <laughs> um, let's look at some things here. So for example, the 1080p 30 frames per second low settings graphics card. Let's get into some graphics cards here. Uh, is now recommending a six gigabyte uh, GTX 1060. Now, again, compared to their old system requirements, uh, the GTX 1060 was listed at 1080p high settings, but again, maybe that was at 30 frames per second. Again, they, they didn't choose to use to uh, specify that. And that's when the game launched. So how about we actually take a look at this? So I've actually tested this out. So this was tested yesterday. This is a GTX 1060 running the built-in, the current built-in Cyberpunk benchmark um, at uh, low settings. So this is 1080p low settings on a GTX 1060. And as you can see right here, this is the uh, current frame rate, average frame rate as the benchmark goes and 1% lows. Um, it's clearly not a 60 frames per second experience but it is clearly better than 30. So one thing to keep in mind is that when system requirements charts are listed at 30 or 60, they do that jump. What they usually mean by 30 is they mean you won't be consistently averaging 60. Um, currently, it's looking like a GTX 1060 averages more like in the upper mid 40s uh, when running at 1080p low settings. So that is... Um, I guess confirmation that, uh, well, how, I don't know what it's confirmation for. That, that's how it, how it runs right now. There's your GTX 1060, 1080p low, and by the way, low, but I, I did put it back to um, native 1080p resolution. The in-game preset does enable some kind of uh, FSR upscaling, so keep that in mind. So, so anyway, I've also tested out some of the other ones here. Uh, some of the stuff uh, is, is kind of crazy. Uh, for example, um, I did pull up a, uh, a 3080, 12 gigabyte, running the game at 4K Ultra. Now, the reason why I did this one is this one also stood out to me. So they're saying 4K Ultra settings, 60 frames per second. Uh, they're recommending an RTX 3080 or a RX 7900 XTX. And they're saying 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Well, interesting, because the 3080 doesn't have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, although the uh, 3080 12 gigabyte does exist, and I do have one of those. So again, this is the current build of the game, not the Phantom Liberty update, but this is the 3080 12 gigabyte. Uh, this is the 3080 12 gigabyte running 4K ultra settings on the current build of the game. And what's interesting to me, guys, is wouldn't you say that this is performing very similarly frame rate wise to how our GTX 1060 was running at 1080p low frame rate wise? Obviously different resolution and settings, but what are they, are they, it does not seem like they're being very consistent with what kind of performance they're calling 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Because once again, we're averaging in the upper mid 40s here. If we wanna jump to the actual finer, final result, it's actually really interesting. Uh, the final result here uh, is very, very close to what we were seeing from the, uh, the 1060. Now this test is from you know a couple months ago actually. Uh, from one of my previous benchmark runs. But I'm just gonna say this seems really inconsistent unless there's some massive changes to how the game performs. Um, because if you're expecting to get 4K ultra 60 frames per second on a 3080 12 gigabyte, as this says, that's just not true. Uh, unless they're using DLSS, but that would be weird because they do give a footnote about DLSS. They do say RT Overdrive was measured with DLSS frame generation switched on, but that's for RT Overdrive, which is not what I was just looking at here. Um, also, <laughs> let, let's just talk about this for a second. If it takes a, uh, 
<laughs> I should put this. If you need frame generation to get to 60 frames per second, you'd probably be better off just not using those settings. Um, I've talked about in other videos, I think frame generation doesn't feel good unless you have a 60 frames per second or at least close to it baseline and then enable frame generation from there because the lower your base frame rate is, the more input latency um, you have uh, because the frame generation increases input latency, but also the larger the difference between each real frame and then it tries to generate a frame in between, the more image artifacting that you're gonna get because there's a larger difference between the two frames that it's trying to generate a frame in between. In other words, taking you from about 40 FPS to 60 FPS, in my opinion, doesn't feel very good. Taking you from 60 to 100 feels a lot better. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Uh, some other things we'll mention here is, why don't we talk about VRAM? That's been a big thing lately. So they are saying that they want six gigabytes minimum to run at 1080p low settings, uh, eight gigabytes for 1080p high, and ultra settings at 4K, they want 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And once you move into ray tracing, um, the minimum is eight at 1080p for RT low. For 1080p RT ultra, they want 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And for RT Overdrive at 4K resolution, they want 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And system RAM, by the way, um, the minimum is not eight, it is 12. Let's check the old system requirements. Yeah, the old system requirements listed eight as the minimum, uh, and VRAM was listed as three as the minimum. And the, uh, yeah, the new ones are up to uh, 12 for the minimum system RAM and six on the minimum VRAM. So some big changes again, along with the required SSD. So, uh, <laughs> guys, I don't know what to make of this exactly. Like I said, because this game's already out, at least the, the base game is, I've already tested it and showed that it seems really inconsistent what they mean by 30 frames per second versus 60 when we look at the 1060 versus the, uh, the 3080. Also, um, are they gonna dr drastically change what RT low means? Because I've tested, for example, they're listing a 6800 XT from AMD as the RT low 1080p 30 frames per second GPU, okay? Up against cards like the ARC A750 and the RTX 2060. Now, I have a test from not too long ago um, on my uh, uh, 6800 XT. So this is my 6800 XT, and this is running the game at 1440p resolution at 1440p, not 1080p, 1440p ray tracing low. Now, to, to be in, uh, clear, ray tracing low isn't very demanding. It's just uh, enabling, I think, local shadows. <laughs> um, so at least in its current state, ray tracing low is running at around 60 frames per second at 1440p on an RX 6800 XT. And look, as we get out, out here, the frame rate actually goes up and by the end of the benchmark run, the 6800 XT is averaging around 70 frames per second at 1440p ray tracing low. And that's crazy to me that they would suddenly feel like you need, uh, <laughs> I mean, are, are they changing what ray tracing low does? I guess would be where I have to fall with that because right now the 6800 XT is averaging over, uh, you know, around 70 FPS, over 60 FPS at 1440p RT low. This, <laughs> so um, all I have to say is I wonder if Phant Phantom Liberty is coming with, like they said here, if, if these changes take effect following the next update to the base game, um, no earlier than 90 days, which would put it out to around the Phantom Liberty uh, launch time, right? So, um, <laughs> guys, I, I, this just seems crazy. I mean, th this looks like some massive changes uh, at least potentially to the ray tracing settings, um, I guess. <laughs> um, now, RT Overdrive, I don't have recent tests on a lot of GPUs. Uh, this one is showing the RTX 4070. So th they're talking about the RTX 4080, which is significantly more powerful. Uh, this is an RTX 4070 running with DLSS quality at 1080p. Um, and then with frame generation on and getting uh, reasonable frame rates. But again, this is using frame generation to hit these numbers. They're saying they're testing with, with frame generation enabled uh, for RT Overdrive. I haven't tested my 4080 recently because my 4080 is actually in the PC I'm recording on right now. This is my, uh, it, it sits in my editing and, uh, and recording PC. 
Um, so I couldn't verify this, but again, like I said, I gave my thoughts on if you need frame generation to hit 60, um, it's not gonna be a great experience, uh, at least in my opinion, that's all a bit subjective. Um, yeah, guys. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think about all this? This is a bit different than my normal system requirements videos because I'm usually doing these based on a, uh, a game that isn't out yet at, at, where we just you know go off of what they're saying and I talk about that, how that seems reasonable. This is interesting in that the base game's already out there. And like I said, this seems weird because it seems like maybe it's raising the system requirements or keep uh, at least on, on ray tracing, again, based on that 6800 XT. Uh, result. Uh, the CPU requirements seem like a massive increase, and I just don't really know what to say about that other than um, if if they're really going to require a 12700 or a Ryzen 7 7800X to hit 1080p 60fps at high settings, that I think they're, they're kind of out of their minds, but um, because right now you certainly don't need that. <laughs> um, yeah, guys. What do you think about all this? Uh, I will link in my description. If you wanna see how uh, a bunch of other GPUs stack up, I usually make heavier use of these in my system requirements videos, but this one's they already had some actual benchmarks of the normal Cyberpunk, we use that. Uh, but there is the tech power up relative performance chart where you can see where your GPU falls in relation to some of these. For example, the 2060 Super, which is listed as their, um, uh, their 1080p high 60 FPS GPU, um, that we can see where that falls relative to, uh, where, did I, where did I put my tab? Um, some other GPUs, like that's very similar to an RTX 2070 or an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. Um, a 5700 XT is usually a bit more powerful. A750 is kind of in the ballpark. Um, so you can get some, some idea of, of where you're at here. But uh, I don't know guys, All I, <laughs> other than, I think this Phantom Liberty is gonna need some testing. Uh, when it comes out to see, uh, and, and I'm really interested on, on the CPU side of things. Are they just getting lazy and they just don't wanna say that they're supporting weaker CPUs? Um, because, <laughs> yeah, 12900K to run at 60 frames per second. Um, yeah, I don't know guys. I, I think I'm just gonna end the video here and read your guys' comments on all of this because, um, seems like some interesting system requirements to me and just I think we're gonna need to test this thing when it comes out. I hope all of you have an excellent day.